we're going to be going through the William Wallace achievement today. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that one. Uh, and yeah, this will end up on YouTube as well, chat. So say hi to YouTube. Ripping that straight from Ludwig. Fuck you, YouTube. Look, fair enough. <laughs> it's all they deserve, honestly. Okay, so to start off with the William Wallace achievement, you want to start with a change in course. Uh, and then you want to go for the King's Party as soon as possible. So when the decisions pop up to like support the King in his marriage or to tell him that he has to abdicate, you always want to go for the one that's like supporting the King. And you don't, like, don't click anything that says like, oh yes, he should abdicate. Don't click any of that. So you basically want to do the change in course. And then you want to come over here, do reinforce the empire down to encourage colonial elite, and then do limited rearmament. By the time you do those, the king should have had the marriage, and then you can select the king's party. I actually started playing Hoi Poor two days ago. Funny you say that. I actually have YouTube guides. So let me, I'm going to plug myself. I'm going to plug myself. I work hard on that. If you go to that link on my YouTube channel, I've actually got some guides that are targeted, like not targeted, but they're like made for new players like yourself that have never really touched the game before. Um, cool. With our army, we're going to just bring our army all together. We're just going to have all of them as like your standard infantry. This works well with cavalry as well because they do have the higher speed. Actually, you know what? I feel like I'll get flamed in the YouTube comments if I don't do it. So I'm going to change my whole approach. We're going to go for cavalry. Yeah, basically split them up like so. You want 18 of them uh, over in uh, this Labrador. Um, and then what you're going to do is put half your army on the border here with Ireland. And you're going to put the other half of your army all the way down here in South Africa. In terms of your industry, sorry, pretty much just build sieves until about midway through 37. The idea is you want to have about, you want to have at least 5,000 guns available and at least 200 political power once you get to uh, appeal to the Imperial Loyalists. That allows us to start rebellions in Canada and South Africa. That will take 90 days. So as soon as this happens, we're going to start the civil war. Uh, you need 5,000 guns to do it and 100 political power. So you need to have that. Then you want to consolidate the British Isles. That will allow us to take out Ireland. That's just for fun. Um, but we also need to do this focus to then go down and unite the Anglosphere, which gives us a war goal on the US. We're going to appeal to the Imperial Loyalists, start the process for the civil war, consolidate the British Isles, kill Ireland, and then we're going to bring the Dominions back in the fold. And that allows us to actually ally with the uh, Imperial Canada and South African dudes. We'll also need to attack Australia because they have just like, they will join the war and they're a major for some reason. All right, so we've done the reinforce the empire, do service overseas. We're going to go for dispersed industry. Again, just sit on that political power. Don't spend it. You want it, you need that political power. So once these decisions start popping up, you always want to go for the royal marriage ones. And the reason you want to hang on to your political power, some of these will take political power away. You'll also lose stability, but honestly, there's nothing you can do about that. Just keep insisting on the royal marriage and let it run. All right, service overseas. Now we can encourage the colonial elite. So upper class opposed marriage. You're probably going to get these. They're just jealous. They're just mad that they don't have some American honey that is in love with them. Uh, whether it's for their money or not, you know, that's not for me to say. Um, one thing I forgot to do is you want to do your spy agency early as well. Um, once we flip over, we're going to start doing a collaboration government in the US. Um, that just makes it easier to capitulate them. Newspapers oppose the marriage. Well, unfortunate, because we don't give a f what the newspapers think. Mainstream media, get out of here. And then here we go, limited rearmament. Cabinet resigns, good riddance, get out of here. We lose a lot of political power, but it doesn't matter because you've been hot, you've been saving your political power, haven't you? You better have. You can train some more divisions as well. Um, just be careful that you're not dropping down below like 5,000. All right, limited rearmament. So now limited rearmament's done. We've done our three focuses here. Just sit and wait because the marriage is gonna happen very soon. And then we wanna go for the King's party as soon as possible. And then we are gonna set up a naval invasion of Australia. So for those playing at home, I thoroughly enjoy putting the bulk of my divisions on the port when you're naval invading because it's really important you secure the ports, especially when you don't have the uh, floating harbors. And then I'll usually just have a couple of divisions land either side of the port as well so you can quickly encircle it. All right, here we go. So you see the Royal Marriage of Edward the Eighth. Now the Royal Marriage is done. We can actually come in here and go for the King's Party. You want to go for that straight away. 
Uh, okay, cool. So now God, uh, the king's party's done. So we go to God save the king. Okay, so the other thing to keep in note, once we get over 50%, I'm being a little bit slack on it today, I apologize. Um, but once you get over 50% uh, strength, you can put two of your spies on the collaboration government, go commence when ready, and then also automatically repeat, and then you don't even have to worry about that until we go to declare war. We're going to build three airports over here and three airports down there. And then we're going to do the same down here in uh we're going to build two down in south africa okay so god save the king's done so first do appeal to imperial loyalists uh and then do consolidate the british isles don't do it the other way around because like your timing will be off make sure you've got ten thousand guns which we have plenty so we are going to train up a bunch more of our divisions king yeet art of war absolutely uh where to go don't worry i will fucking give you sun Tzu's wisdom there you go. That was meant to look better than it did. Chapter 9, the army on the march. And we are looking at... I'm going to read you verses 39 and 40 from Sun Tzu's Art of War. If the enemy's troops march up angrily and remain facing ours for a long time without either joining battle or taking themselves off again, the situation is one that demands great vigilance and circumspection. Almost pronounce that a circumcision. If our troops are no more in number than the enemy, that is amply sufficient. It only means that no direct attack can be made. What we can do is to simply concentrate all our available strength, keep a close watch on the enemy, and obtain reinforcements. Don't attack unless you have uh, numerical superiority. So we are going to swap from our sieve production to our mill production. And appeal to Imperial Loyalists is done. So now, no, consolidate the British Isles, pause the game. Uh, and then what we do is down the bottom here has at least 100 support equipment in stockpile. So we are going to boost relations with China real quick. Uh, what we need to do is remove the support equipment off our uh, cavalry template, which we can easily do. We just need 10 army XP. Send them the attache. Now we'll very, very slowly get army XP. Cool. So our normal cavalry division, we are going to swap that out for artillery. Bang. So now we can go for the Ferment Canadian Uprising and South African Uprising. That's going to take 90 days. By that time, this focus will be done. We'll be able to kill Ireland and be on our way. We are going to focus the rest of our production on our infantry equipment. But I'm also going to add a factory for a few factories for fighters and cavs. Um, I am going to turn this into a YouTube video as well as like a guide of how to do this achievement. So we'll see how that goes. So yeah, if you guys wouldn't mind checking out my YouTube channel, feel free to hop over and subscribe. Um, I do have guides for new players. So if you have any friends that want to get into the game or you yourself are new, uh, yeah, feel free to go over and check it out. Now, bring the Dominions back in the fold is what you want, because what that's going to do is allow us to ally with the rebels that pop up in each of these. Now, we have the war goal on Ireland, so we are going to take it nice and easy. And there we go. Just like that, we've taken Ireland, so we'll take all of that. Uh, cool. So now we've got our 150 political power. We're going to go to partial mob. All right, cool. So now Free Canada has declared war on Canada and Unitary South Africa has declared on South Africa. So you can actually see over here, basically, they're going to hold them off for the most part. Uh, and then, um, yeah, once we finish the bring the dominions into the fold, there'll be a decision where we can ally with both of these and then take them over. Cool. So now we've brought the dominions back in the fold. Uh, we are going to go for the reassess continental commitments. Uh, that is because it give, it gets rid of the, uh, water and or wars, which gives us a shitload more manpower. So we have a war goal. Uh, we can just declare war on these guys. Um, the thing is, they're guaranteed by America. So the better way of doing it is down the bottom here, you can ally the Canadian Uprising and ally the South African Uprising. And then all of a sudden, we're already at war with them. And because we're joining a war that's already going, uh, the US won't declare war on us. Have them attack. You can honestly just battle plan this. Uh, and these guys up in Canada, I'm going to put them on aggressive. Make sure our air forces are working. Uh, our naval invasion over here has launched. We've sunk some of their convoys. All right, so our naval invasion is about to land. Cool. So, all right, you see what I mean? We've naval invaded either side. We're also pinning them. So we're going to take one of these divisions from each, and we're going to attack Perth. So this one's attacking Perth, and then this one's going to move around and encircle them. 
This one's going to move over here and take the uh, airport. So yeah, now we've encircled them. They are suffering an encirclement penalty. Uh, fun fact for you new players, if you hold control and then right click on the attack bubble, this blue arrow will come up. And that means that this division is attacking this tile, but he won't move there once the battle's won. All right, why are they doing that? That's fine, we'll gobble them up. We are just gonna run down to Quebec, Montreal and Ottawa. So now we've got the political power, we're gonna improve our working conditions. Ah, uh, cool. So our naval invasion over here has landed. That's fine. The US is land leasing me. I don't think you know what's coming, my guy. Okay, cool. So chat, now we've done this. Um, we need to go down these two focuses as well because we need to get Unite the Anglosphere for the uh, war goal on the, US, on the US. So once you get the puppets, you want to take all their divisions. They're going to be a big part of what helps you uh, in this next war. Uh, I always forget Alaska, so that's why I'm doing that early. Cool. So now we can go for Unite the Anglosphere. That gives us the war goal on the US, and it also gives us cause on Ireland. Um, yes. All right. Puppet. Puppet. Uh, absolutely dog shit performance from the Aussie resistance on that one. Mate, you're f telling me. I don't want to be that guy, but they should have fought harder. Military parade. Oh, it's the Emu Empire. Let's go. Um, cool. So now that's done, we are going to declare war on the USA. Okay, so chat, if you zoom in here, you can see a lot of their, uh, there's a lot of gaps on their front lines, right? So what you want to do is put all your divisions on aggressive. Like losses honestly don't matter if you're just going for this achievement. Like look at all the gaps here. Just have them on attack, aggressive assault. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we are going to declare. And then... Oh yeah, it's not working. That's because we need to call in Canada. And then what you can do as well, if you slow your game speed right down, just go zoom in real close and just micromanage your front lines. Just basically push divisions into all of the gaps. Uh, war propaganda, good thing to do. Um, if you're below 50% war support, you might have mutinies and um, lose some stability and shit. Let's keep going into... Keep pushing through, keep taking tiles. Basically, this is just a game of gobbling up as much land as we can, getting some encirclements as well. That helps a lot. We might even get a cheeky encirclement on these guys. Keep pushing through. About to take their capital. Again, like I said, uh, just keep pushing down. The, sorry, the dawn of the what? The North American Association. It's them in the Philippines. Ah, cool. So France has joined the war. That is both good and bad. Uh, it's good because then we can kill France as well. It's bad because we have no divisions uh, to defend our own borders. So what we're going to do is we are going to take our navy. We are going to put it on strike force. I'm going to move it back here. That's just to hopefully stop the French from naval invading us. Luxembourg's joined and the Czechs have joined. Um, so yeah, basically we just need to kill France. Once we kill the US... Alright, spoke too soon. Cool chat, so basically uh, that is the US defeated. Um, now for the purpose of the achievement, we do need the peace deal. We're going to naval invade France. They'll never see it coming. Uh, it'll give you a decision to create a collaboration government. Don't do that. A... Oh, we should actually be able to go tip of the spear. That, that gives us... Uh, Tip of the spear gives us increased um, naval invasion capacity. So what we are going to do is these guys are ready. We will launch that naval invasion. Now this naval invasion may not go well, so we can just... Okay, these guys are going to die. So long as we take one port, that's all we really need. There we go. Bang. Okay, cool. So now what we can do is we can flood in... We are literally just going to battle plan this shit. Fantastic. wonder if France still has disjointed government. They do. So their surrender limit is much lower. So we should be able to get away with just taking Paris. And if we can rush to Paris... Cool, that might be the end of France, honestly. Okay, obviously not. We need a few more. Look at that. We are just rolling through. Let's go for an encirclement. Ah, too slow. Cherbourg it is. Where's their capital now? Oh, it's Calais. All right, we'll take Calais. We'll take Dunkirk. Oh, it's reverse Dunkirk. All right. 
Here we go. Now, this is the important thing for the achievement. We are going to puppet the United States, and then we might just take the rest of this for ourselves. Cool, peace conference is done. So now we've done that, and you have this decision here, install American monarchy, install United Kingdom of America. Wallace is the leader. Now, if we come into here and we find Scotland and we release them as a puppet, and that is going to be the achievement. You guys can't see it pop up because of my overlay. I promise you it's there. All right. And... Oh, God, I need to find it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. William Wallace. Achievement complete. Uh, so, yeah, that's how you do it. Um, so, yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, thanks, everyone, for watching.